Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Hakuoki Kyoto Wings Okita's Route. I do apologize, I'm still dealing with these lovely allergies, so if my voice sounds really scratchy, I do apologize. Anyway, if you become a fury, Okita, wouldn't that break Kondo's heart? Kondo? You have a lot of respect for Kondo, right, Okita? Please, don't do anything that would hurt Kondo. So, Okita... Please. Okita bit his lip. However, Kaoru didn't stop. Ever since you started suffering from tuberculosis, I wonder how many times the chief of the Shinsengumi thought of himself, to himself. If only Soji were here. I'm sure even today, if you weren't sick, he would have ordered you to be there. Ugh. Please, Kaoru, don't do this. If you're really my brother, and you really care for me, then why are you doing this to Okita? Just as I screamed that. Oh. Before he could answer, four human shapes leapt through the door. But I only see three. Uh, um, that's not four. Furies! He reached for his sword the moment he saw their red eyes, but his body no longer obeyed him as it once had. His hands fumbled on the hilt and the sword clattered to the floor. This is all I am now, Soji Okita, the captain of the Shinsengumi's first division. What was Okita thinking? Was he sad at how powerless he felt? Angry? In the darkness, I could only barely see his face, and his emotions were hidden from me. Then suddenly he moved, snatching the bottle from Kaoru's hand. We are going to stop Okita. Okita, no! If you drink that... He glared at the Furies, perhaps taking in the monster he was about to become. Aww. Then he looked over at me, and on his face was the faint, sideways smile I'd seen so many times before. Man, you really never shut up, do you? Oh, of course that pops up. He threw back his head, and I watched the red liquid drain from the bottle. Oh, shit. Kaoru smiled. More furies, hungry for blood, ran into the room. I froze, terrified. Blood fell like rain, blood drawn by the white-haired monster who had left his humanity behind. Gah! Oh, shit. Is it just me, or does he look younger with the white hair? Maybe being a fury does that to you. This was Okita, the fury. Okita the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. In exchange for the strength of his... In, un, uh, bu, pff, in exchange for the strength of, to lift his sword, once again, he had traded away his soul. We are going to look up his soul. Or, I'm guessing Okita, we're looking up not his soul. <laughs> he became a fury after drinking the water of life given to him by Kaoru. Shit. Oh my god, he's intense now. His snow white hair fluttered like a blizzard as he swung his sword at the Furies. The carnage lasted only seconds, though it seemed longer. All that remained of the Furies were bleeding corpses. Ugh. Oh my god. Holy crap. Oh my god. It's creepy looking. Fresh blood dripped from his pure white hair, the proof of the curse. Happy now, Kaoru Nagumo? Yes, I am. You were splendid, Soji Okita. There are no words to express my gratitude. He clapped once, and then a cruel smile split his face. For falling into my trap. Gah! Even with the water of life, the battle had weakened him. I caught Okita just before he hit the floor. Okita, are you okay? Why did... His hair was back to its normal color. It hid only temporarily his na true nature. But having even a piece of the old Okita back was a relief. Was I a fool for feeling that way? Jizuru, you asked why I, your brother, would offer the water of life to your dear Okita. What? 
I didn't understand. What was he saying? Calru smiled again. You don't get it, do, do you? I gave him the water of life precisely because you care for him. What? I glared furiously at this boy who claimed to be my brother. What's so funny? He only smiled wider. Oh, I'm not smiling because it's funny. I'm just happy. I'm happy I got to make my sister suffer. Unlike me, my sister was loved by everyone. I'm happy to see you suffer. God, this kid's an ass. Even though he's older than us. But yeah, he's still a kid and he's an ass. His voice had changed. There was a manic edge to it now. And the more he talked, the more his grotesque grin twisted his face. In his eyes, I saw more madness than in those of a fury. The Nagumo family had hoped for a female demon who could bear their ch them children. They were disappointed to discover they had ended up with the male twin. I suppose I can't blame them for what they did. I simply wasn't equipped to produce children, no matter what they did to me. I was worthless. That's warped. That is so warped. How many times was he told how worthless he was? When he spoke, the word had the sound of one he'd heard so many times that it was simply part of him. Of course, anyone who told me that has long since been, uh, dispatched. I wasn't such a fool that I couldn't guess what that meant. To speak of murder so easily. Ugh. I have the same blood and the same face as my sister. But because I have the wrong equipment, I was treated like trash. Less than trash. And whose fault do you think that is? I looked at that hideous smile twisting the flesh of his face. My face. And shivered. There's a chance that I could look like that. And I didn't want to believe it. I couldn't help but touch my face to make sure. Does it bother you to see this face smile like this? I know how you feel, sister. Whenever I saw you happy, it made me so angry. With the last word, he lunged for my neck, hands outstretched. <laughs> Fingers like iron closed around my throat. I'd like to see that face again. The one you made when Okita the human died and Okita the monster was born. Sadly, I don't think that's possible, but oh, it was delectable. Far better than I'd imagined. I'm glad I chose someone you really cared for. Y you Did he trick Okita just to see me suffer? <laughs> you! Oh, does it hurt? Are you frightened of me? Ah, but this is only the beginning, dear sister. He let go of my neck. I fell to the floor, my chest burning. Raw, hacking coughs tore their way out of my throat. As Kauru faded into the shadows, I saw a last gentle smile, and then his laughter filled the night. <laughs> Chizuru Yukimura, your brother will always be dreaming of your misery. <laughs> uh, tears began to pour down my face. My eyes. Close enough. There was a man, my brother, who hated me so passionately that he would destroy another man for no other reason than to hurt me. Oh, Okita! My hands tightened around him. Okita didn't care about me one way or the other, but because I cared for him. He'd been thrown into hell. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The attack on the watch, as well as the assassination of Ito, later became known collectively as the Aburano Koji Incident. An unexpected turn from both the demons and the Satsuma, from their trap laying resulted to, in a number of casualties for the Shinsengumi and the watch, including Heisuke's fatal wound. Oh my god. <laughs> Here comes the sadness. Oh my god. In order for Heisuke to live, he had no choice but to drink the water of life. Okay, so he's not dead. I was about to say, oh shit. While, there, while this was all going on, Chikage Kazuma took the time to strike at the heart of our compounds. The Fury Corps was, were called 
to our aid at the last second, and then Okita, too, was brought down the path of becoming a fury. So not only was Sanon a fury, but now Heisuke and Okita were as well. The serum brought into the Shinsengumi by my father was now slowly eating all of them away. My heart began, began sinking from the weight of all of this. That's intense. December of 1867. December 1867. Scarcely a month had passed since Abira... Abri, uh, really? Abirano Koji. Saito and Heisuke had returned, but the Shinsengumi was hardly back to normal. A dark, tense atmosphere pervaded the compound. Many men had lost their lives in Kazuma's attack. Even more had been injured during the attack at Arborano Koji. Among them was Heisuke. Several of the rank and file soldiers had seen him mortally wounded. He had looked as if he would not survive. For that reason, Heisuke was declared officially dead and made a member of the Fury Corps. Saito hadn't been wounded but many among the common soldiers began to call him a coward. To them, he had left the Shinsengumi to join Ito, then betrayed his new master when he sensed a change in fortunes. Poor Saito. That breaks my heart. I saw no reason why he shouldn't set them straight and say that he had tr never truly left the Shinsengumi, but he claimed he would rather stay silent than tarnish the honor of the commander and the chief who had ordered his actions. As such, it was decided that Saito would leave the compound until tempers had been allowed to cool. My poor boy. I can't wait to do his route. He was sent to stay at Tenma in order to protect Kyotaro Miura, an official of the Kishu Domain. It was night time. I was going to say nightmare. It was night time. As I passed the entrance, I saw Okita. Okita sat alone, gazing up at the sky. What was he thinking? I wondered. I thought about calling out to him, but hesitated. What are you doing, Chizuru? Just get over here already. Okay. I walked over and sat down quietly next to him. In the light of the stars, his face looked pale. Whether it was a trick of the light or the pallor of the skin, I couldn't tell. How are you feeling? You mean my sickness or about being a fury now? <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. Oh my god, stupid thing. Hmm. It's been a little rough during, that, during the day, but my body seems to be healing up pretty good. They told me if I get some rest, I shouldn't have any problems swinging around a sword like I used to. Something in his voice suggested he was trying to convince himself as much as he was trying to convince me. Why don't we go back inside? It's winter now, though. Sitting outside at night, stargazing, can't be good for your health. Oh, I can handle this easy. It's not that cold. Being in bed all the time is depressing. Seems worse for my body, too. Well, that might be true, but Kyoto winters aren't anything to scoff at. Yeah, yeah, I know. I remember everyone complaining when we first moved here. Still, the cold's not something I've ever minded. I suppose it is kind of bracing. Yeah, I'd rather deal with cold than hot. I live in Texas, and dealing with the Texas heat sucks. <laughs> I'd rather have winter. My husband used to be like that, but now he's like, nope, I need the heat. Cold hurts, because he has arthritis really bad. Yeah. And no, he's not an old fart. He's actually nine months younger than me. He's 29. And he just had has always had arthritis. So, I mean, he had to stop playing baseball because of it, which sucks for him. I would have loved to see him play baseball. Anyway, it's been getting colder, though. I think it might snow. Yeah. I opened my mouth, then shut it again. I'd run out of things to say. Okita was quiet as well. His eyes were trained to the sky, and he was perfectly still, 
like a statue carved from ice. Hey. Y yes? I chose this myself. Pretty stupid of you to blame yourself. Huh? What do you mean? Momentarily distracted by his grin, I didn't immediately catch what he meant. You blame yourself, right? For me drinking the serum? Uh, um, no? Don't give me that. You couldn't lie to me, baby. Wait, why the fuck did I say that? Oh my god. <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> you couldn't lie to a baby, so stop trying to pull me... Pull one over on me. God, I can't read. <laughs> you don't need to worry about it, okay? This was my decision, and I don't regret it. I felt like I should speak, but I didn't know what to say. We sat there in silence for a few more minutes, and then he turned to me again. And of course that pops up. You shouldn't get involved with a guy like me. <laughs> my God. Uh... That came out of nowhere. My mind went blank. I didn't know how to respond. Was he joking, as always? I looked back at him, but I couldn't read the truth from his expression. What the heck? What's with the at signs? <laughs> I said, and guess what we're going to say? Oh, I think it's supposed to be quotation marks, but it came out really weird. No. No. I returned his gaze, forcing myself to look just as solemn as he did. Sorry, what did you say? I said, no. Ha, huh. man, what kind of woman are you? Won't even cut an invalid any slack. Oh my god, he's got tears. Oh my heart. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, you can't just act like you're sick when you want something. That's not fair. Yeah, yeah. I really am sick, though. Well... I'm not just sick. I'm dead. Nothing alive in here anymore. His words cut into my heart, just as deeply as any sword. Oh my god. I'm gonna cry. I haven't cried in his route yet. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Don't say that. How can you be dead? You're here with me, talking and moving around. A corpse can't do that. True. True. But whatever is doing this talking and moving, it's not human. No, that's not true. I don't know what you see, but I drank that stuff. I felt it. I know what I am now. I've stopped coughing, too. I guess it heals more than wounds, huh? It's not like there isn't a price to pay, though. Trying to do anything during the day is, well, it's rough. I drank the serum thinking that... It helped my condition, and I'd hoped that I could be useful to Kondo again, you know? But if I can't even walk around during daytime or go on rounds or kill any bastards for Kondo, then what good am I to anyone? I'm just useless. Until this point, I'd never seen Okita open up so much, let alone show any signs of vulnerability to me. Was it really so important for him to be in Kondo's service? I guess I understood where he's coming from, but I don't think Kondo wants you around just because he wants you to do things for him. Okita shot me a bitter glance that was something usually reserved for his enemies. Would you mind not trying to speak for Kondo? You've only known us for four years. What do you know? I had a feeling he was going to say that. Yes, it's true that I've only spent time with everyone here for only four years. But then again, it's not like you're capable of knowing exactly how Kondo truly feels. So, you think you are then? I can't say I know for certain. But in the least, the Kondo I know, if you're alive, or even if you were dead, or something else, I'm sure he would think you are who you are, Okita. He would say that more than anything. He's happy to see you alive and healthy. Okita seemed taken aback to hear me suggest such a thing. But eventually, do you really think he thinks that? Do you think Kondo would still need me, even if I can't hold a sword anymore? Yes, of course. I feel that way about you, and I've only been here for four years. 
For someone like Kondo, who's known you for even longer than that, I'm sure he'd feel even more strongly about it than that. What do you think the Kondo in your heart would think, Okita? Okita looked up again at the sky, as if reflecting upon every moment through the years of their relationship. Oh, butterfly. You're right. He's a good man. I'm sure even if I wasn't able to fight anymore, he wouldn't turn his back on me. His expression seemed to brighten, even if just a little, and it relieved me to see him cheer up, no matter how small of a change it was. I am going to let you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!